In a business that encourages writers to repeat themselves, to stay relentlessly on brand, it's exciting to see artists take a chance, cast off the dictates of publicity and marketing, go rogue. The results are sometimes catastrophic but often lead to the creation of singular and surprising works. Pilot Imposter, James Hanahem's follow-up to his acclaimed novels God Says No and Delicious Foods, is one of these singular works, a book impossible to categorize. In a recent conversation over Zoom, he explained his inspiration. My husband and I were in Cape Verde and on our way to Lisbon, he said, I was on a plane, and I had finished the book that I brought by a Cape Verdean author and I decided to start reading the book I brought by a Lisbon-based, Portuguese author, which was Fernando Pessoa. For those unfamiliar with the work of Pessoa, he was notable for concocting heteronyms, what we might call avatars, fictional writers who work in a variety of voices and styles and who often review and translate each other's work. In the early 20th century, Lisbon wasn't known for having a literary scene, so Pessoa provided it, creating more than 70 distinct personalities. As Hannah Ham says, he was doing sort of fragmented identity stuff long before anybody was. One of Pessoa's more famous heteronyms is the sheep herder poet Alberto Claeru. The first line of the first poem begins with a lie on his resume. So by the time the plane ride was over, I had kind of conceived of the idea that I would write a response to every last poem in this friggin' book. The resulting book is a collection of rants, philosophical musings, poetry and prose, fiction and non-fiction, loosely built around the dread of airplane disasters, spiked with collaged images of Lisbon and planes falling apart. It is by turns funny, disturbing, puzzling and evocative. The Pessoa poems that inspired each piece are credited in the margins, and although his book stands on its own, if you read the two together, the experience deepens and exposes both the gaps and the similarities in how each of these writers sees the world. Think of it as the literary version of Liz Fair's rejoinder to the Rolling Stones, Exile in Guyville.